Well, this is where we had uh, Queen's Arcade shops and uh, Fountain Street shops there. And uh, then uh, Andrus House here and Dorchester House just beside it. Then down in Great Victoria Street, Lincoln Building. And the Lincoln Center that we are going to build will be one of the biggest layer and entertainment uh, development in the city. And we have other buildings there like Albany House, Downshire House, And uh, then down in University Street, we have Holiday Inn Express. And Renshaw's Hotel. On Lisbon Road, we have uh, Ashoka Restaurant and our adjoining shops there. Hmm? Plaza Hotel is just about there, which was built and opened in 1990. So there's uh, quite a bit of center downtown Belfast, especially South Belfast, that we've been responsible for regeneration of. My company is called Anders House Limited, and it is a property development and a hotel company. We have done various property developments in Belfast over the last 20 years, and we are planning some major developments in downtown Belfast, and we own and operate three hotels in Belfast. We have several other development plans to build two other hotels and a layer and entertainment complex. So of the development companies in Northern Ireland, it is probably the fast growing and very progressive company and well recognized for that. This is a scale model of uh, Lincoln Center Belfast. This is probably the biggest layer and entertainment project for Belfast. And it is uh, basically a large piazza trying to con uh, co capture the spirit of Covent Garden London, a nice big public space where a lot, lot of things happen. And then a multiplex cinema, probably 18, 20 screen cinema a large hotel, a lot of bars and restaurants, layer and entertainment, a family entertainment center, and a health and fitness club in the basement. A lot of offices and residential suites. We are trying to do this a mixed use scheme, which is layer and uh, entertainment, and also a residential and a commercial development. And uh, it'll have 500 car parking spaces at two basement levels. So we get excited about it. Uh, the project, the construction on this project will start before the end of 90 years and will be completed in the year 2000. Good morning, Mr. Khan. How are you today? Oh, very good. And how are your business? Business is very good. We have oh. 72 rooms occupied tonight, which yeah. is about 98% of the business. Right. And all the function rooms will be in here, so we're quite busy in the restaurant for lunch. No, oh, that's, that's very good. Okay. Good to see that. Okay, good. right. Have a nice day. Presently, we employ directly about 150 people. But then our subcontractors are building contractors, probably another 50, 60. It could vary when they were, whenever there is a bigger project. Maybe there are 100, 200 people employed on various building projects. Hello, Rina. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Very good. Are you busy today? Oh, we're very busy this afternoon. Probably booked actually today. Oh, that's, that's so good. So we have good. a few specials on, so yeah. it's going to be busy today. Good. Okay. Okay. Right. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. But we have some future projects. We are starting another uh, hotel development in three, four weeks' time, which will create about 120 new jobs. Uh, it'll take 16 months to build it. So during construction, the contractor will employ probably 100 people. It was uh, quite funny. Uh, the first Immigration Act uh, was passed in October 62. Under that legislation, uh, there was a provision for Commonwealth citizens living outside UK 
if they wanted to come here to apply for an environment coaching. A friend of mine who was in that business, travel business and passport applications business, uh, as a practical joke, completed four applications of close friends and sent it to the British High Commissioner in Delhi. And we received employment vouchers within, I think, three, four weeks. I was surprised to see this. I never applied and I got this employment voucher from Her Majesty's government uh, as a sort of uh, right to come to UK. So I was quite happy with my job. I had a good job. I worked for the rehabilitation department in Punjab government. So I had never thought of coming to UK. None of my relations or friends ever left India. So I just put it away and then after a few weeks another friend and his relation was living in UK. He came on holidays, Christmas holidays in 62. So he talked me into it and the curiosity grew. At that time, because my education, people growing up in India, we learned more about British history and British literature. English language was compulsory in my schooling days. So you had curiosity to come to this country and see what this country is like. When I told my parents that uh, I was going to England, they were very sort of annoyed. My father particularly told me, he said, look, people go to England to work in foundries and factories. You have a nice job here and your life is comfortable and you've got a good future. Why, why take a chance? But I had just uh, inside me that I wanted to explore and uh, go to a new place. Probably I was getting bored out of what I was doing in India. And uh, I don't have uh, much sense of fear. So I wanted to take a chance, and uh, this is how I came to England, and then ended up in Northern Ireland. I came to England with very high hopes, young for hopes, education, English no problem, experience in the sort of bureaucracy, and I started applying for those kind of jobs. But within a few weeks, my friends and the attitude of other people uh, brought the realization that I'm not going to get a sort of bureaucratic office white collar job. The only jobs that uh, people from Indian subcontinent were encouraged was to work in foundries, factories, railways, post office. So this friend of mine that I was staying with persuaded me to seek a job in a factory. It was uh, unemployment was quite high in 63. Uh, and uh, he had to use his connections, some sort of influence, to get me a laboring job in a factory which made uh, gas appliances in, in England at that time. How did it feel? You're obviously an educated man, full of hopes, full of aspirations, and there you were working with your hands. Totally disheartened, totally uh, sort of ego destroyed. Uh, there were a lot of people working in the factory who came from villages who were either illiterate or semi-literate. I was more educated and I came from a different background. For me to be doing the same job, pushing a wheelbarrow in a factory, I was dying with shame. Just somebody knew me from India, see me what I have come down to. Uh, it was very disheartening. But then there was a question, either accept that defeat and go back or just persevere and look for some better opportunities. And I took the second option. How did you come to be a postman? Well, it seemed a better opportunity, a better job, rather than working in the factory where I was. Wages were better, working conditions were better. So I went for interview to the post office. I failed first time. Uh, the inspector who interviewed me, he was walking ahead of me. Just